In the 19th century and well into the 20th century, pits and collieries, they were popping up all over the place, all over the United Kingdom. Black gold, coal was being dug up and used for all manner of industrial purposes. And one area that this was absolutely huge in was Derbyshire. I'm on the edge of Chesterfield and I'm right beside a place called Homewood, which is next to a place called Heath. A little village, two little villages. And these two villages were pretty much encircled by the railways. And what I mean by that, there was two main railways. There was the Great Central and there was also the Midland Railway. And they dominated the area, serving the pits. You got the Great Central Main Line and you'd also got the Midland Railway serving all the various collieries. I'm on the site of Grassmore Colliery just here. There used to be all manner of sidings behind me. There was the pit in 1957. I believe this pit was some kind of training compound as well, shortly before it closed in 1961. And not only were the pits and collieries, there was also quarries. There was fabrication companies like steelwork. And also there was more railways than roads in this entire area at one time. Not quite sure about that bit. If, if we pop over to Railmap Online, I can give you an idea of why I might have said that. So Railmap Online is always the best resource for your railway maps. You can see yellow and blue lines absolutely all over the place. And we're beginning up here. This is where Grassmore is and Grassmore Colliery and Grassmore Sidings was just here. There was also a Grassmore station further up on this Great Central line up there. Look at all those yellow lines that are on the left hand side. That might be an area to explore on another day. But today we're following this line up here, this Midland Railway curving off to a junction where the railway went in four different directions. You can see this one going off to Clay Cross, the one we just come from back to Grassmoor, the one on the right heads off towards William Fort Colliery and also the Great Central Railway, which is the blue line on the right. We're taking the one that goes further south until it meets up with the Great Central Railway and Homewood is that village right in the center. At this point, we're gonna jump onto the Great Central Railway. That's the blue line and head upwards. And we're gonna loop around the eastern side of Homewood and curve around to where William Fort Colliery once was. Now you can see also the Great Central Railway splits into two. We're not going that far up there, but on the right, it goes off towards Staveley and on the left it goes towards Chesterfield. But there are multiple collieries in this area, or there once was, and some of them only lasted for around about 15 years. So let's jump back down and we'll continue our walk. So Grassmore Colliery, that is Grassmore Pond just there. And this is all the countryside all the way around here. We're gonna pick up the route, which would leave this area behind the colliery and all the sidings that were once there. And we're gonna head up to the Midland Railway line up there. And the first pit that we'd come across on this tour of circular route of railways was Alma Colliery. I don't think Alma had a very long life. We'll talk about that a bit more when we get there. But first of all, we're going to push on down here, meet up with the former track bed, and then we actually get to go under our first railway relic is a road over bridge. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Let's go find it.
So this here is Birkin Lane, directly above us. It's going to take us over to Grassmoor. Pretty standard red brick, rectangular open, isn't it? It's a standard road above, double carriageway. I mean, it was probably not the original bridge, was it? If you think about it, it's quite possible it was actually replaced at some point, given that this railway dates back to the late 1800s. And this is a concrete bed up there, isn't it? On the uh, road there, the base of the bridge, it's concrete. And they weren't really like that back then, were they? But that's nice, isn't it? We've found this pretty much straight away. So straight through there, the track bed went round to Grassmore sidings and also the pit. And eventually ending up at Grassmore station on the Great Central Railway. And also where Corbriggs is. Corbriggs is a little place just before where Grassmore station once was. Apparently there's a tunnel, Corbriggs tunnel. It went underneath where the road is that goes up through Corbriggs up to Hasland. I've read little nuggets on the internet about this tunnel, about memories of people walking through it after the line closed. But whether it's still there or access can be gained, I don't know. I've not found any pictures of this tunnel. It's only on Rail Map Online. Let's have a quick look at that and I'll show you exactly what I'm on about. This is where I'm on about. So we've got Grassmore Colliery down here, look where we started. But if we go upwards towards Corbridge, you can see where it says tunnel right below where Grassmore station is and it was a small branch of the Midland Railway which appeared to join on to the Great Central's Chesterfield loop line. Absolutely surprised if there's anything left of this but does anybody know? If we zoom right into where it says tunnel and you can see it goes through some area of private land but potentially that grassed area on the right hand side that portal could be there. I am wondering if the yellow line is slightly off where it should be and the actual track bed for this line is that row of trees at the top and the other portal just below where it says DS Scrap Metals. If anybody knows if this is still around, drop me a message below. on the right hand side isn't it used to be farmland as it often is and also there's a farm which I believe is still up there up here is where Alma Colliery was I think it only had about 13 years use it's pretty short isn't it must have been connected underground and they just decided to bring the coal up from other nearby collieries 1943 to 1958 I've just double checked I thought it was a short timeline for Alma Colliery Going on a bit of a descent again. We've come over the brow of that hill. That is pretty steep, and this is pretty steep going down as well. There was a triangular junction where the line that we're going to follow now goes a little further south, as if you're going in the direction of West Houses and all the lines down there and those coal fields. The Great Central was over there. William Thorpe Colliery is a left turn, I'll show you. So there was Alma Colliery just there. There was Pewitt Colliery just there. William Thorpe goes off to the left down here. We're going to go further south and meet up with the trap bed of the Great Central Railway and then take a left and follow that route up towards William Thorpe. So the line here, as I said previously, it went off in four different directions. I didn't mention before, that way is off to Clay Cross. So Clay Cross that way, back towards Grassmoor where we've just come and further north we're going to take the right and head a little bit further south
So this is the Pilsley extension of the Midland Railway. We're heading off now down towards the Great Central Line. So that's North Wingfield over onto my right. William Fort Colliery be a bit over there. You might see a pile on pretty much a quarter of a mile on the other side of that. And Homewood is over there. We've got to go under a road up here. It is the road that takes you to Wingfield down there. And then we've got to look for the junction which will put us on the Great Central Railway to completely take a different trajectory off towards William Fort Colliery. And also there was Heath Station a little bit further up from there as well. It must have been a level crossing. I'm curious to find old pictures of this. This is Heath Road. Our track bed's going down here and the colliery was just over on the left. And that was Pewitt Colliery. At the time of recording and walking, I haven't got any dates for you of opening and closing. But we'll jump to maps again. You can see exactly where we are, where that was. And also it'll put into perspective where Heath Road is and the crossing that we've just gone across. And here is the location of Pewitt Colliery. Very, very short lifespan for this one. 1885 it was opened, but it closed only 11 years later in 1896. You can see the crossing that we've just come over. Look just here, that's that where that level crossing was. And there was also a little branch going up to Pewitt Colliery. And for some reason, this one particular field, we seem to lose the track bed and there is a diversion. And it also looks like it does that a little bit further down too. Now I think our track bed isn't what we're on now. I think it's slightly out of sync. I think it was over there. There's a line of trees the other side of there. And we've just looked at maps and the footpath wasn't quite where the line of the railway was drawn on rail maps. And just here we've got to take a tight left and then a bit of a right before we get onto the Great Central further up. So it's this point we now pick up the Great Central Railway and we start heading kind of north again up towards Heath Station and eventually it'd be Staveley or you'd get on the Chesterfield Loop and head up at Chesterfield. Great Central Railway down there towards Tip Shelf. We're going this way and then we're going that way. Heath Station then William Fort Colliery. Now a lot of this again appears to have been landscaped there is a culvert down there, the stream going underneath it. Very, very, very tiny. Nothing to crawl through on a different day. Heath is over there. That's where we're going. But you can see there's a hill similar to the line out of Grassmoor over there. This has been, this has definitely been landscaped again. I'm expecting it to go back down again on the other side. Ooh, those clouds look a little bit ominous, don't they? It's lovely over there, over Chesterfield. It's been raining all day and then I came out after work to just get some fresh air really and I thought, oh, I'll come and do this. Thought I'd cram it in. Take about an hour and a half. There's the crossing just there, look. Over Tip Shelf Road. We'll go over that. And then Heath Station was a short distance further down. Tip shelf road complete, back on the track bed. Gate looks quite new, doesn't it? Heath Station, a little further down here. That had two platforms. Don't think there's anything left of that. And then the track bed curves around where we meet up with William Fort Colliery, the last coal mine of the day. So Homewood or Hardwick Colliery, that was over there, opened in the 1860s. There was a branch coming across here somewhere, quite possibly, where the line of telegraph poles are. And that was only a short branch of the Midland Railway that joined on to this 
the Great Central Railway and it was probably, you know, put in to serve the colliery just here at Homewood. And it's immediately after Heath Road down here, once we've crossed that again, is where Heath Station once was. Very, very close to William Fort Colliery and then we're pretty much done for the day. The drainage has got quite a bit of a gush on, hasn't it? I mean, that's all swampy land over there where the Homewood Colliery was. Absolute mess in there, you won't want to go in there. It's good uh, habitat for wildlife though, isn't it? Not long till Heath Road now. Yeah, you can see what I said about the amount of rain we've had. Look at that flowing over there, down into there. Almost at Heath Road. Very, very busy road at times. A lot of traffic as I stand here. I'm gonna cross over and pick up that track bed again. So after Heath Road, the track bed is now being consumed by Park Road. It goes around to the industrial estate. Heath Station was right here, right about here. And then after this, the line split into two. One way, it went off to Staveley Central, and that way, it goes off towards Grassmore. Behind us, of course, is Tipshelf, where we first come from. You can see all them old cottages just through the bushes. Track bed was down there. We've got to go up here and down the other side. May have to walk a little bit on Park Road before we do pick up William Fort Colliery, which was over there. So I step back into the past now, here's Heath Station and look above the signal box roof on the top right hand corner you can just make out the rows of those cottages that we've just walked past just behind those trees and bushes. You can jump back even further and it's a picture postcard just here, look that must be dating way back to the early 1900s. Everything is in pristine condition there but sadly in 1967 this is the view that we had all the tracks lifted, everything gone. It's just a ghost of its former self, all overgrown platform. So let's remember it, how it was. Look at this beautiful colorized photograph. We're working, coming into the platform at Heath. This is how we remember Heath Station. So there is Park Road. I'm gonna cross over a lot. You can see where it curved around. That was all the expanse of William Fort Colliery. Absolutely brilliant. We're almost at the end of our circular walk of the railways going around Homewood and also intercepting Heath as well. So William Fort Colliery was all this area here. I think it was one of the larger ones in this area. And we're back on our Great Central Line, which was soon split into two as I previously mentioned. But we're gonna take a left, a left as if we're heading back towards the line, but go back down to Grassmore, because that's where it split previously, wasn't it? When I was at that junction. You can see I'm fast losing the light. It's just gone 5 p.m. but it's not helping with these heavy looking rain clouds. On that side, it's a little bit brighter look. Not long now.
we've just come down from where Heath Station was. We've looped around of William Thorpe Colliery and we're now just about to approach Heath Junction. We're not actually going that far. We're then going to follow those yellow lines down which would have gone past and served William Thorpe Colliery before we eventually meet up at the junction where it split four ways that you saw earlier on, right beside where Alma Colliery was. So here we go, look, Chesterfield Road is just there. See the lorry going over it. The last significant thing. Look how much I'm losing the light now. It's so dull and cloudy above me. Let's pass underneath. Now the light was really poor at this point, but I managed to get a really good photograph of Chesterfield Road Bridge on the opposite side. So ahead of me going under the bridge, we'd end up at the colliery and behind me, we'd end up going back to that great big junction that took us to Clay Cross, Grassmoor, and also the Midland Railway South that we walked along earlier. So I'm gonna continue that way now and finish off back at that junction. Here we go, back at that massive junction. Alma Colliery, Pewitt Colliery. We've just come from down there, haven't we? And that way would be down towards Grassmoor Colliery, back where we started to do our circle around Homewood and Heath. Thank you very much for watching. I'll be back around Chesterfield and Derbyshire in the future to do a little bit more. But for now, it's time to go home, put my feet up and plan the next adventure. Please like, subscribe comment below. Thank you very much. See you in the next one. Bye bye.